Hello and welcome everyone to my channel Code with Ease. Today as part of the sorting and searching primer series, we are going to discuss on the part 2 of the bubble sort algorithm. So in the previous part, we have discussed about what bubble sort is, an overview of that. And we also did a whiteboarding and a dry run to understand. In this part, in the second part of the series, we are going to see the code implementation in Java for the iterative way of solving this and the recursive way of solving this. Also, the bonus is what is the optimized way of solving this. So there will be three different code samples. Uh, the optimized way is going to be a bit of modification to the existing iterative solution only. So yeah, that is what we are going to do. And at the last, we are also going to discuss on the performance of bubble sort in terms of time and space complexity. So that's the plan for today's session. Continue watching. Hi. So now we are going to discuss the iterative solution of the bubble sort algorithm. So here I've taken an array and this is the function and this is the method in which we have to write the logic. Hi. Here's a brief introduction for the ones who are new to the channel. The objective of Code with Ease is to make problem solving and programming simpler. If you are someone who wants to become a great developer and wants to level up their skills, data structures and algorithms is indispensable and you need to form a solid foundation of that. And this is exactly where we come in. Because we post topic-wise video explanations in Java on various coding interview questions that can not only help to crack the coding interview, but also help to improve and refine the problem solving abilities as a developer. And finally, here is the USP of our channel. We code every solution live, we do not copy-paste code snippets. We start off by clearly defining the problem statement, the given inputs, the required output, time and space complexities. We also then discuss the brute force way of solving any question without jumping on to the solution and then gradually move on to the optimal solution. We try to use online whiteboarding wherever applicable to explain the approach and the concepts. So that is all about us. So if you guys also want to be a part of this journey, do support us by subscribing to the channel. So with that, now let's get back to the question. First of all, as we mentioned in the whiteboarding, we'll have two loops. So the outer loop is going to keep track of the number of passes. So we are going to start from zero and i will be less than arr.length minus one because as we discussed, the number of passes will be n minus one. Now the inner loop is going to start with another pointer called j. In this, this inner loop is anyway going to run for all the elements, but it is going to run from zero to the last unsorted element. So how do we do that? j will be less than arr.length minus 1. So, error dot length minus 1 is anyway the last element minus i. So, wherever the i will be. So, if you do minus i of that, we are going to reach till the last unsorted element. So, in case of the first pass, we are going to co cover this portion and then in the second pass, we are going to cover this much. So, as and when the i is getting incremented, we are doing a minus of that along with the error dot length. Based on the position of i, we will have to shorten our problem space. So, this is being taken off. This is being taken care of in this. And now inside this loop, we will have this condition of if arr of j is greater than arr of j plus 1. If this is true, means any element is greater than the next element, then we will have to do the swaps. So either we can use the swap method over here or I will just straightly write the swapping logic. So this is the swapping logic where we put this into a temp variable. Then arr of j is equal to the next arr of uh, j, j plus 1, j plus 1. And error of j plus 1 is equal to the 10. That's it. So, this is the swapping that we are doing based on this condition. As we have discussed earlier, this is in place sorting algorithm. So, this is supposed to manipulate the existing array itself and then return the sorted version of this. So that is why I have just printed this array itself. And yeah, so that's all about the iterative solution. Let's write around this. As we can see, this array is sorted. I'll try to manipulate this and add some more random elements. Yeah, so this is how you can use bubble sort algorithm and this is the iterative solution for that. And if you want to optimize the solution, how can you do that? But first of all, let's understand what we mean by optimized solution. Bubble sort is an algorithm in which it can give us the best case complexity of order of n because if let's say the array is already sorted okay in that case we have a mechanism in which we can detect in the beginning only whether the array is sorted or not if the array is already sorted we need not do all these conditions swapping logic and all of that so there's a way to do that and for that we will use a flag we'll use an additional variable which is the flag variable so what we do in this whenever a swap happens we will set this flag to 1. Initially, it will be set to 0 and then we are going to set this to 1. Why? As you guys might remember, in every pass, in every pass, the largest element is supposed to go till the last and then followed by the second largest element and so on. So, what we are essentially, so what we are trying to do over here is, if this condition turns out to be true in any of the passes, 
or rather we can say if this condition turns out to be true in the first pass in the very first pass means when i is equal to 0 and then if it turns out to be true then this flag will set to 1 if that happens means there was a certain element which was not in its correct position and we have made it to the correct position by doing the swapping logic so that is why because the flag is set to 1 means the array was not sorted we had some element in its incorrect position and we made it and we put it to the correct position that is why we are doing this flag equal to 1 now let's say the array is already sorted so what we are going to do is outside this inner for loop we will check if this swap is still equal to 0 oh, sorry not swap this flag is already equal to 0 means outside when this uh, for loop the inner for loop ran in none of the cases this condition turned out to be true as a result of which the flag was always 0 if that happens then we can understand me that if in one pass in the in the very first pass if nothing happened if no swap happened means the array is already sorted because if there was some element in its correct incorrect position the swapping would have happened and the flag variable could be equal to 1 so that is the point in which we are going to simply return we will stop the bubble sort over there so now let's try to see this in action so i'll just use another array simple i'll just put 1 2 3 4 5 I'll comment, I'll call this with the error of 1, I'll comment this out. And let's try to run this. Okay, so I'll just put a debug pointer to explain what is happening. So flag is equal to 0, the outer loop started inside the this loop. As we can see, this condition is not true. It went ahead, now j is getting incremented. Every time the check is happening, j is getting incremented and it is not going in. Now finally, it came to this condition. Flag is equal to 0, yes, so that is why it is going to return and come out of it. So this is the optimized approach of the bubble sort which we wanted to talk about. So now the next thing what we have to do is we have to learn about the recursive way of solving this bubble sort which we are going to see in the next session. Hi, so now we are going to see the recursive implementation of the same. So whenever we are trying to solve any question uh, in a recursive way, I often speak about this in my recursion primer series also. There are two aspects of it. First, I talk about the base case. And second is I talk about the main body or where the smallest sub problem is solved. What is base case? This is the condition which is going to stop the recursion. And in the main body is where we are trying to solve the smallest sub problem. And also as part of solving the smallest sub problem, we are also inside the main body apart from having the logic of that. We are also calling the function, whatever the method we are using with the modified parameters. So all of that we are going to do in the main body. My theory is we should not rush to arrive at the base case first because in usual in complex scenarios, it is very difficult. The advice is to first try to solve the smallest sub problem. While you do that, automatically you will realize what should be the base case. Why should I stop solving the question? That is how I usually approach any recursive algorithm. In this case, again, we will keep aside the base case and we will think of how can we solve the smallest sub problem. I will go back to this iterative solution. So, what have we learned from this? There are two loops. The outer loop is basically keeping track of the iterations of the passes and the actual swapping comparison logic is happening inside the inner loop. So, from this what we can understand is the outer loop is nothing but it is giving an instruction to how many times the inner loop should be performed. So, we can abstract this out and we can just remove this part as of now. The inner loop, however, the comparison and the sorting part is happening irrespective of that. It is going to happen throughout. So, that is why we have to retain the inner loop. So, that should go as part of our main body. And the outer loop, we can, as we have tried to abstract it, this outer loop we can try to convert into a recursive call because that is what is giving the instruction of how many times the loop is happening. I would like to emphasize on the term how many because how many times something should run is indicative of what should be my recursive method. So, I will copy this inner loop part as of now and put it inside the main body. Assuming this is going to solve the smallest sub problem. Again, what is the so smallest sub problem here? We have to do some kind of a comparison which is being done over here and based on that if the condition is true then we have to do the swapping that is the smallest sub problem we are trying to solve how many times to call and all of that is coming we are coming to that later we are trying to solve the smallest sub problem so that is why i have taken the inner loop and pasted it over here i'll remove this flag as of now we are not trying to do any optimized approach for this as of now now as you can see in this method apart from the array i have also taken an additional variable called the size why have i done so because if you see over here we are relying on the length of the array and on the basis of that we are doing the manipulations in the inside of the loop like ar dot length dot minus one and then minus i we are doing because we are trying to shorten the problem space so that is why i have taken this extra variable and we are going to play around with this soon so what i'll do is i'll remove i as of now and ar dot length i'll substitute it by size 
one more thing you can notice in the very first iteration what is error dot length in this case size and error dot length is same in the very first iteration i is equal to 0 so then this loop is happening how many times error dot length minus 1 minus 0 minus 0 is nothing so it's simply it's happening from arr from 0 to arr dot length minus 1 so if size is already error dot length then minus 1 if i do then that will simply give me this condition now i'm making this condition equivalent over here that part is sorted. Next, let's worry about how can we do the recursive call. Means now we are going to substitute the outer for loops functionality. So we'll call this method. We'll pass in the ARR. But now we have to play around with the size. Because we want to instruct this loop, whatever the main module we have written, we want to instruct this loop to happen a certain number of times. Initially, when i is equal to 0, then it is happening from 0 to ARR dot length minus 1. So the idea over here is the outer loop is starting from 0 to ARR dot length minus 1 in the initial first pass very first pass the moment i becomes 1 it, it becomes from 1 to ar dot length minus 1 so if you notice again firstly it is happening from here till here secondly when i becomes 1 means y comes over here then again we are also reducing the size essentially the size of the array is getting shorter in every pass that is why here instead of passing the entire size i will do size minus 1 so this is going to be the recursive call and now coming to the finally the base case how can we make what is the modification we need to make over here? The array is not changing. It's an in-place sorting algorithm. The array will remain unchanged. We have to play around with this parameter called size. So we can say when the size is equal to 0 because we are doing minus 1 every time. At one point, it will become 0, right? What will be that scenario? If size is equal to 0 means there is nothing else to be sorted. So in that case, we will just return. It's a void return type, so simply return. That's it. That is the base case. So base case is done. The main body we have taken care of by small, solving the smallest subproblem, and we are also doing the recursive call on reduced problem space every time. Now we can try to run this. Yes, it's sorted. So that is how we use recursion to solve the bubble sort algorithm. Okay, so finally wrapping up this series by discussing on the performance of bubble sort algorithm. Two components, time and space. Time complexity for worst case is order of n square. When we talk of complexity, we basically mean that as it's as I told earlier, like the philosophy is compare and swap. So O of n square is O of n square comparisons are happening, and also O of n square swaps are happening throughout the algorithm. Hence the complexity will be O of n square. Similar thing is for average case also. So in case of best case, as we have seen, we are still trying to do the comparisons with every element. At the end of the pass, we are deciding whether the swap variable has become has changed or it has not changed. So if you talk of comparison, that we're still doing for the entire array. Hence, the comparisons will be order of n. But if you talk of the number of swaps, there is no swap involved in case of best case because the array is already sorted. Hence, the time complexity is order of 1 for the number of swaps. So this is why for best case, I've broken it, down, broken it down into comparisons and swap. Coming to the space requirement, in case of iterative version, space required is constant again because we are not using any additional variables or anything. And in case of the recursive solution, the space complexity is linear. So that is all about the performance also and with that it's a wrap on the bubble sort algorithm series. Do let us know in the comments below if you guys have any questions or doubts or you want to share any feedback on this video. If you have enjoyed the session so far, do hit the like button so that this can reach out to many more people and if it does, it just gives us enough motivation to put out more such content. Also, if you are looking forward to more videos like this, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon next to the subscribe button to never miss an update on our upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching.